Edward, don't make that call. What? Don't make that call. And what's the matter? He's the matter. You know him? That's David Bard. My first husband. We stop her. Well, you know mother. She's the marrying kind. Oh, be serious, Carol. He proposed and she said yes. I heard them. All right, if that's what she wants, let her. What difference does it make? She's your mother. What's that? Someone who pays your bills at boarding school. You can't be that cynical. Cynical? I'm not even that. I just don't care. I don't believe that. I remember when you were a little girl. I remember how you used to sit and watch her hour on end. Watch is right. Look, but don't touch. You might spoil the makeup. Take care of that face. I didn't come here for a handout. It's your mother I'm worried about. Dad, what makes you think there's anything I can do? Well, she might listen to you. Oh, no. Please, for my sake. I'll do it for you. I'll talk to her. Promise? That's my girl. You still love her. I know you do. And so do you, Dad, don't you? A lot of good it's done us both. Hi. Of course, buddy. Sorry, Steve. We'll have to postpone it family business, but I'll try and see you tonight. Uh, my place? I said I'd try. Will you call me? I might. with mother, it might be a good idea if you found someone closer to your own age. Someone who will really love you. 
You're still such a child, Carol, always so concerned with age. Right now, all that concerns me is you and Ed Stanchy. Well, don't you judge all men by the kind you run around with. At least they're honest. They like me for what I am. Their tastes are undeveloped. I never could win an argument with you. But I've heard you at night in this bedroom, alone, crying. Yes. Because I was lonely. Well, now I'm in love and I don't intend to be lonely again. You loved them all. I found them amusing. This is different. Mother, at least give yourself a chance to think about it. Go away for a while. No. Now stop acting like such a naive child. I'm far from naive. I'm a woman. And if you'd stop to realize it, you'd pay more attention to what I'm saying. No woman would ask me to leave the man I love. Now, neither you nor anyone else is going to break this up. It might interest you to know that he's living here now. Mother! In the guest house, where he can be safe from your father, newspaper reporters, and gossips. Oh, Carol, please meet him and get to know him. I want us all to be friends. Mother, don't be a hypocrite. You never wanted me around your other boyfriends. Why should you start now? Carol? You hate me, don't you? I feel a lot of things for you. But at this minute, mostly pity. <laughs> My child, let me look at you. Always more lovely. I don't feel very lovely, Vera. I just had a session with Mother. You must not be harsh with her. You must understand her. You've been telling me that all my life, but can't she see she's making a fool of herself? These are not words for your mother. Do you want her to marry this man, Stanchi? No, I'm not in favor of it. Because it will not make her happy. But arguments, fights, they are not going to change her mind. You must get close to her, and then you make her see. I've tried. I can't. She won't let me. Sometimes people who are in trouble do not want to be helped. But that is no reason to abandon them. Don't worry, Vera. I won't abandon her. I don't seem to be able to. rent and bought him his car. Now, what kind of a man will accept handouts like that? You've made out quite a case. Why do you need me? Because she won't listen to me. In her mind, I'm a naive little girl. Certainly no one to consult in matters of romance. What about uh, financial matters? I'm not worried about her money, if that's what you mean. Miss Bard, I asked you a question. If you want my help, answer it. A trust fund pays me a regular allowance, a large one. I get the principal next year. Stanchy or no Stanchy. What about uh, inheritance rights? The funds were almost a million dollars. After that, I don't care. Look, it's not me you're supposed to investigate. It's Edward Stanchy. I always like to find out as much as possible about my clients. I'm not for hire to break up romances. This is no ordinary romance. My mother is a very rich woman. And Edward Stanchy is a con man. Maybe. You'll prove it. Maybe. I'm paying you to prove it. Nobody pays me to stack evidence. Let's just wait and see what I turn up. All right. But we haven't much time, Mr. Shane. I'll do a rundown on Stanchi, and we'll take it from there. I can be very grateful, Mr. Shane. And I want the full treatment. You'll get it. Well, I 
come on. Huh? Busy? Nah. I got four Solvang of the UN arriving at the airport in an hour. And uh, three Cuban, uh, three Cuban revolutionists to interview, but they can wait if you got some hot coffee. Hmm? Boy. Dolores Dane. Hot enough? That depends. What's she cooking up? Another wedding. Name's Edward Stanchy. What do you know about him? Dolores Dane's current boyfriend. He uh, sells stocks for Chandler and Company. That's a, that makes number four, doesn't it? Let's see, there was that polo player, and Count Tamini, then uh, Texas oil man. There's always a Texas oil man. And now Stanchy. Hey, what does he figure with you? That depends on whether he's been living the good life. Uh, you got a file on him? No, I can check. Is this front page, or do I turn it over to Miss Lonely Hearts? Run it down. You won't be disappointed. Okay. <laughs> I'm on my way to the airport. This is all I could get on Stanchy. Oh, thanks, Tim. Now, let's see what you've got. It's plenty. Ooh, delicious. Yeah, isn't she? I mean the one in the Brooks Brothers suit. Oh, relax, Angel. With this guy and women, the line forms on the left. I guess. You're so right. Oh, one more thing on this character. Used to have an outfit called Frank Thomas Real Estate up near uh, Jacksonville. Thomas? Yeah. Little promotion that ended up in court. Don't forget where you read it. See you. Who do we know at BBS? Bureau of Vital Statistics. Ambrose Larson. Hmm. How could I ever forget a name like that? <laughs> Psychological repression. The last time you phoned him, it cost you 50 bucks. And he didn't get back to you for a week. That's right. If it's going to cost another 50, I might as well spend it in person. Oh, and uh, make me a list of all those checks, huh? Mm-hmm. problem to me. You don't think so? I used to be a size 10. Well, a tight 12. It's funny how you put on weight in this business. I don't eat much. Maybe you don't uh, get enough exercise. Mm, but I do. Every night. I have one of those reducing machines. You know, the type you lie down on and they roll all over you. <laughs> uh, I know the kind. First, I went to one of those reducing salons. They wanted to sell me a life membership. Imagine, a whole lifetime of reducing machines. I would have taken it, too. Only I figure I won't be in Miami much longer. Ellie, yeah. uh, how long has it been since you were a size 10? Oh, two, three years ago. Well, some people put on weight from frustration. You been frustrated lately? Me? Are you kidding? I mean, like from Ed Stanchy. Who's Ed Stanchy? Your husband. Frank Thomas and wife leaving court. Almost didn't recognize you. That was three years ago. No record of a divorce. Imagine you're just waiting for your husband to put the big bite on Dolores Dane. Hmm? Say, what kind of a cop are you? Just a friend with some advice. You're probably in for a little more frustration. Better take out that life membership. Hey, Barbara. Another vodka. And some peanuts. Please forgive my appearance, Mr. Shane, but I was getting ready for bed when Carol called. Oh, I appreciate your seeing us so quickly. 
Well, I respect your reputation, Mr. Shane, but I want to warn you in advance. Whatever you have to say, I am going to marry Edward. Well, he's probably a very charming man, Miss Dane. I don't know. I've never met him. But I do know something about him. The guest cottage! Edward! <laughs> Settle back, settle back, and have a full flavored smoke. Settle back, settle back, with a Marlboro. Make yourself comfortable whenever you smoke. Have a Marlboro cigarette. If you think flavor went out when filters came in, settle back with a Marlboro, the filter cigarette with the unfiltered taste. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro filter, flavor, pack, or box. Try Marlboro with the exclusive select trait filter that gives you unfiltered taste. I think I've got it. Oh, good. Yeah, it's pretty badly flattened. We'll be able to tell more from the one that's in him. Uh, be sure and have the boys outside keep looking for that gun. Hmm? Right. Where have you been? Talking to the doctor. He just put Dolores to bed. Oh? Well, to talk to her again. Oh, I don't think she could have added anything, Will. Semi-shocked, she was incoherent. Turn up anything? Well, we found the second bullet. Lodged just above the chandelier. The angle of entry indicates it was fired just beneath it. Must have been a struggle for the gun. Stanchi managed to deflect the first bullet, but not the second. What about the gun? Uh, still looking. All right? Yeah, they've been dusting. Too bad for him you uh, didn't get here sooner. With your information, she'd have sent him packing before this thing happened. If she would have believed me. Huh? Hmm? Now, later. Trouble is, for her, this was a last gasp romance. The truth would have hurt. What about the locks? Any of them forced? Oh. Front door was open. Or else Stancy knew the killer and let him in. Gentry. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Housekeeper just came home. She's the last of the servants. Uh, bring her down here. Okay. What'd you get from the other servants? Zero, nothing, blank. She's asleep. She will be all right? You are sure she will be all right? She'll be fine in the morning. A sedative was the best thing the doctor could have given her. Yes? We'd like to talk to you. Carol, please. I'll go with you, Bear. I know Miss Dane for 14 years. I've been in a displaced persons camp in Germany. Her foundation was doing charity work there. 
I was very sick. She brought me here, and I've been here ever since. And you were afraid if she married him, you'd have to leave, is that it? No, that's not true. Well, then his death wouldn't have made any difference. No, of course not. All right. Let's go over your uh, activities of this evening. Uh, where were you? I told you. I was at the, at the movies. And what did you see? I can't remember now. Now, certainly, if you went to the movies, you'd remember what picture you saw. I can't remember. Please, stop asking me questions, please. Miss Dreyfus, I'm trying to clear you of a possible murder charge. I've committed no murder. And would you please answer my questions for your own sake? No. No! <laughs> I have done nothing! <laughs> Well, remember her background. I know. Don't you think I'm sorry for her? The man's been murdered. I'm just doing my job. You know that. I know that. But does she? Miss Dreyfus. Come on, sit down. Please. Now, believe me. No harm will come to you if you'll just answer his questions. And you? You are with him? No. I'm Michael Shane. Carol hired me. Now, if you'll just think real hard, maybe you can remember the name of that picture. Or maybe the theater where you saw it. The theater? It was the Woodside. Oh, uh, what was the story about? Just tell us anything you can remember. It, it was an old picture. You mean an old picture that has been rerun? Yes. And it had Edward Robinson in it. G. Robinson. There was a murder. He had a dream. And Miss Dreyfus, the Edward G. Robinson picture, face in the window, is at the crown. The crown, yes. But you said the woodside. The crown, the woodside. They are near each other. I told you I didn't know. Please leave me alone. Jim. Uh, Miss Dreyfus, when you went to the movies this evening, were you wearing earrings? Earrings. Yes. You lost one of them. Right here in this room. No. No. Impossible. I wasn't here this evening. Yes, but your earring was. I must have lost it this morning. I was cleaning in here. Yes, it was this morning. I think I'll have to take you downtown. Downtown? Sorry, but I'm going to have to put you under arrest. Arrest? You mean I have to go to jail with you? Carol, please. You have to, Vera. It'll be all right, though, I promise you. Miss Dreyfus, I'll do whatever I can to help you. Come along. Poor Vera. Mr. Shane. I can't really believe that she'd do a thing like this. She had no reason, no, no real reason. She certainly seemed devoted to you and your mother. Oh, yes, she'd do anything for us. Anything? You just made yourself a quick fee. You'll get your check in the morning. Sounds like goodbye. You've done your job. My mother's not going to marry Ed Stanchy. Well, that's for sure. But what about Vera? There's a time for detectives and a time for lawyers. We have a lawyer. Goodbye, Mr. Shane. <laughs> I 
Sometimes this is a rotten job. If you refuse to see a lawyer, wouldn't talk to me, any of my men. Well, I don't blame her. I guess to her, we're just the Gestapo. Maybe she'll talk to me. Oh, sorry, Mike. But I'm trying to get a confession. And visitors won't help. Usually somebody has to be guilty before they'll confess. Oh, come on, Mike. I'm as sorry for her as you are. But you saw the evidence. She had motive, opportunity. I'll make a deal with you. What kind of a deal? Let me talk to her. And I'll give you some information you can use. You got any information? I can get it without a deal. Got any brown? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about the information? Come on, give, give, and it better be worth something. Well, night before last, David Bard, that's uh, Dolores Dane's first husband, yeah. broke into Wed Stancy's apartment. And she caught him there and uh, worked him over. How do you know? It was one of the reasons Carol gave for hiring me. She was afraid her father might do something foolish. Like kill Ed Stanchy? Maybe he would have, but he never got the chance. Now, I'll bring him in for questioning, but it doesn't change my opinion. What about our deal? <laughs> I think you're wasting your time, Mike. But if that's what you want, that's what I want. All right. Uh, bring Vera Dreyfus up here, will you? All right. Do I talk to her alone? All right. Uh, but I'll be tuned in. I packed my husband's lunch, so am I glad they invented new handy wraps. Now Daddy likes a sandwich wrap. Handy wraps, the clear new economy sandwich wrap for lunch boxes. Keep sandwiches far fresher, far longer. Here's why. I've broken an egg into a bowl lined with handy wrap. I'm plunging it into boiling water. Imagine what would happen to ordinary sandwich wrap. Handy wrap really locks in freshness. See? Not a hint of a leak. Yes. New handy wrap tears with a snap, stays put where you want it. Yet it's so easy to handle. Now Daddy likes the sandwiches. Honey, you've unrolled yards of handy wrap. Good thing it doesn't cost much. You get 100 feet at wax paper prices. 100 feet wraps 100 sandwiches. Get new handy wrap, a product of the Dow Chemical Company. Now Daddy likes the sandwiches. Lieutenant Gentry tells me you wouldn't talk to a lawyer. I do not have to. Why did you come, Mr. Shea? Are you trying to trick me? No. I want to help you. Why should anyone want to help me? You were in a concentration camp. Yes. I saw Auschwitz. That's something I'll never forget. You should forget. I've tried it. All these years, I've tried. Now they bring me in here, and it all comes back. All of it. I was just lying on my cot. All of a sudden, the bars are barbed wires. I started to scream. I bit my lips until the blood came. Believe me, I want to help you. Help me. The only way you can help me is to make them let me go while I still have my sanity. Did you kill Edward Stanchy? No, I didn't. And the police have tried to prove that you went to that theater. They talked to the bus driver and the 
girl at the box office, and they don't remember you. Now, something more serious has happened. The police gave you a test this morning, called a dermal nitrate test. It shows that you fired a gun last night. I am a simple woman. Who can I fight these things? <laughs> Miss Dreyfus, please. Sorry. Now, I want to know everything I can about you. Exactly what are your duties in the Dane household? Miss Dane doesn't like to be by herself. I stay with her as much as I can. And what about the cleaning, and marketing, laundry? I'm in charge, yes. I see the, the, the things are done. You do nothing yourself? One thing. Small thing, Miss Dane's personal clothing, washing, ironing for her. How often? Every day. Do you ever use uh, bleach? Sometimes, with some things. How about yesterday? You smile. Have I told you something important? Yes, Miss Dreyfus, you have. I think you can go back now. All right, Will, you can come in. It was very good and kind of you to come here. Very kind. You heard it. I heard. She used bleach in yesterday's laundry. You know what that does to your dermal nitrate test. Yeah, it knocks that theory into a cock that. We've still got a case against her. You haven't got the gun? No. Mike, you might be building false hope for that woman. Hope is all I can give her right now. But maybe I can do better later. How? I'll let you know after we've talked to David Boyd. We have to find him first. Any luck on the gun? Not yet. We found some of Vera Dreyfus' footprints. They lead from the cottage down to the orange grove here. She could have hidden there until she decided to go back to the house. Or she could have been out picking oranges yesterday. Why, why do you keep making excuses for her? You haven't got the gun. If it happened your way, it would be right here on the grounds. She could have smuggled us back into the house. Past a whole line of detectives? No, you're not dealing with an experienced criminal. She's just a frightened, emotional woman. Mm. Well, she wasn't frightened with that gun. Not out here. Shame. What are you doing here? I came to see your mother. You're no longer working for us. I thought I made it quite clear. My mother's not feeling very well. Neither is Vera Dreyfus. Miss Dane, I just left Vera a few minutes ago. Did she kill him, Mr. Shane? They have a very good case against her. Uh, a friend of mine, please. Excuse me. Oh, and excuse me, won't you have some coffee, Mr. Shane? Thank you. Are there any other suspects, Mr. Shane? They're looking for your first husband. David? They think David did it? He had a motive. But of course, uh, a lot of other people did too. During the last few weeks of his life, you saw Stanchi more than anyone else. Did you ever meet any of his friends? No. We were always alone. He said we only had time for each other. I got here soon enough. Excuse me. Well, I uh, 
See you later. Yes, thanks, Steve. Hey. Second. Sure, what do you want? This. Wait a minute. Better let me have it. What's this all about, Mike? This. An automatic, just like the one that killed Stanchy. She gave it to him. Four cartridges missing. Look, I don't know anything about Stanchy or who killed him. Yeah, well, you can talk about it down at headquarters. You're both under arrest. was brought to you by Jell-O tapioca puddings. Three wonderful flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, and orange coconut. We've definitely established that this was the murder weapon. Concealing and attempting to move it, it's a serious crime. You already said that. Then I'll add something new. This Bard wanted Stanchy's death, and you were the logical executioner. Look, I'm not for hire any place but the tennis court. Everybody thinks I sponge off of her. But to me, she's just a real good time. What sort of a good time are you expecting this morning? I didn't know about the gun until I got out there. She told me to get rid of it. I, I couldn't make a scene. There were cops all over the place. Where were you last night? I had a date with Carol. When she didn't show up, I went out. Where? I was at somebody's apartment. Whose? Anita Keith. Is that another one of your uh, pupils? That's right. All right, send her in. Right. Miss Bard? We'll check you out. All right, that's all. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Sit down, Miss Bard. Now, uh, let's hear your version. Well, Mr. Shane left us alone when he started looking for the killer. Mother was in a state of shock and didn't know what was happening. So I started walking her back to the house. And then I saw the gun lying under a bush. And so I picked it up. But you didn't tell me about it. Why? I didn't know who killed Ed Stanchy, and I still don't. But I thought the gun might belong to someone very dear to me. Doesn't Vera Dreyfus fit into that category? Gentry, yes. Mm-hmm. Hadn't picked up. You were right about the gun, Miss Bard. They just traced the registration. Belongs to your father. Oh, no. My father isn't that kind of person. He, well, he just runs away from things. He just wouldn't have the courage. He had the courage to break into Ed Stanchy's apartment. Yes, alcohol courage. The boys were open last night. You'll uh, be where we can find you, of course. Yes, I'll be with my mother. Then you're free to go. I know you're wrong about my father. Well, got it all figured out, Will? No. Neither do you. I'd be a lot closer if I could explain that. What? This clip. Hold six cartridges, right? Mm-hmm. Four of them are missing. Should only be two missing, one in the ceiling and one in Stanchy. Uh, sometimes people don't bother to fill them. David Bard will be able to tell us. 
Yeah, when you finally get him. He's either on a bender or on the run. What about Vera Dreyfus? Still our number one suspect. Number one? Number one, number two, what difference does it make? At least we ought to let her know she's not alone. Come on. All right. Open the door, quickly! Got there soon enough to cut her down. Yeah. How is she? Bad. Doctor said if she just put up a fight, she'd have a chance. Fight? From an attempted suicide? Just doesn't make sense. She lives through displaced person camps, concentration camps, all that horror just to wind up hanging herself in a Miami jail cell. It sure makes her look guilty. We've got to find David Bard. He might have the answers that could save her. Well, I checked with Gentry and no sign. What do you think he might be? Well, Carol said when he started drinking, she'd get calls to pick him up in Skid Row bars and flop houses. Well, how about some of your usually reliable sources down there? I've been checking every contact I could think of. No luck yet. Another scotch. We got an arrangement, right? You pay, I'll pour. I got it here some places. Go ahead, give me a drink. I'll find it. What's the matter? You lose something? My money. Gee, that's too bad. How about having a drink on me? Hey, Fats, no cuff. Relax. My bank. But that's national. Hey, without it ought to be a double. Give him a double. Thank you, mister. The name is Fats. Now, don't go away. I'll be right back. Shane speaking. Mr. Shane, this is Fats. I think I found your man. David Bard, are you sure? Where? Pete's place. I know it. Good. Keep him there. Keep him here? You realize what he's drinking? Scotch. And I'm buying. Fats, I said keep him there. You the police? No, but they're looking. I'm Mike Shane. Hey, drink some more of this. Oh, I'm sick of come it. Come on, come on, drink it. Tim Rourke, reporter. You killed Stanchy? No, I didn't even know he was dead. Where were you last night? I don't know. Around here someplace. You got an alibi? If I have, I don't remember. Maybe you killed Edward Stanchy. You don't remember that either. No, no. That I'd remember. I'd be proud of that. Still carrying a torch. What if I am? That doesn't prove I killed him. He was shot with your gun. Ah, that's impossible. Not according to ballistics. A 32 automatic. Uh, it could be. Wait a minute. I remember Stanchy took the gun away from me. What do you mean, Stanchy took it? Yes, I was in his apartment and he walked in on me. Mr. Bard, when was the last time you fired that gun? I never fired a gun in my life. It was a souvenir. You know how many bullets were in the clip? Well, it was full when I got it. I guess it was still full. You better call Gentry. You stay with Mr. Bard till he gets here. What about you? I'll be at headquarters. Boss, you want to settle up? <laughs> okay, Fats. How many scotches does it take? Four at 60 cents a piece. How's uh, 20 now? Well, for most people, a character like that run a lot more. But for you, Mr. Shane? I know, Fats. You've got a heart of gold.
Carol, I'm going to the hospital. I have to see Vera. Please don't. She needs us. Mother, there's nothing we can do for her. Nothing. Carol, if Vera dies, I'll die too. Mother, don't say that. Look, we'll, we'll go away together. We'll, we'll get to know each other and we'll forget all this. I'm going. Well, what are you doing in here? I wanted to look at something, privately. I don't know what you want in here, but I think we better leave right now. Not without your mother. Vera's dying, Miss Dane. But you can help her. How? By telling her that you've confessed to the murder of Ed Stanchy. What? That she doesn't have to die to protect you. My mother was with you when Stanchy was killed. No. He was killed before we ever got to that guest cottage. There had to be four bullets fired that night. Two by you when you killed him, and then later two by Vera Dreyfus to throw suspicion away from you. I remember you wore a scarf over your hair. That was to cover the glass particles from that broken light fixture. Then you came up here and cleaned it out with this comb. He's guessing. Don't listen to him. You mean you really want her to die for what you did? No. Mother. No. It's funny how you can love and hate in just one second. I didn't mean to kill him. We were going to have a nice, quiet dinner in his cottage. I felt young, gay, and in love. Well, oh, Connie, I tell you, I'm doing the best I can. Ellie, darling, will you listen to me? <laughs> no, nothing strange. In just a couple of more weeks, I'll have all the money we can use for the rest of our lives. I had to use that marriage routine. Oh, Ellie, darling, you have nothing to worry about. Mm -mm. I want a girl, not a mother. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love you. Right. Dolores. Dolores, what's the matter? What are you doing? You won't have to marry me, or even make love to me, or call me darling again. No one Stop will! It. Stop it, Dolores! And she made up this plan to help me. Carol, she tried to help me, too. I told her the truth when we got back to the house. We'd better go. <laughs> Do you think there's still time for Vera? I hope so. How about some brandy in your coffee, Mike? No, thanks. Heard from Will yet? You just asked me that two minutes ago. Not funny, huh? No, I'm sorry. Guess I left my sense of humor in my other soup. Well, Mike, you did everything you could. Yeah. No, thanks. Well, what's the best that could happen? Well, if the DA will take a plea of manslaughter, Vera Dreyfus and Carol will only be tried on conspiracy. Then? They could have a chance for a suspended sentence. What if the DA doesn't take the plea? Then they can all get some big time. Accessories after the fact. And what's the fact? That a rat like Stanchy is killed. Why? In here, Will. What are you, supporting the phone company? I've been trying to reach you for an hour. Well? What happened? The DA accepted a plea. Manslaughter. 
Thanks, Will. All right, Angel. You can break out that brandy now. With pleasure. Will? I'm off duty. Here are some exciting moments from next week's Michael Shane mystery. Here's how big you are, baby. Don't come near me, Wally. You touch me again. <laughs> Trina can be very nice. Lots of fun. Lots of fun today. She reported a murder and we can't find the corpse. A murder? I never thought I'd see the day you take on a killer as a client, Mike. Whatever gave you that idea, Will? Trina DeWitt is your client. That's right. What's the problem? Hey, you're the one with the problem. I'm holding her for murder. Now look, Shane, you're a practical, realistic man. You'll never get rich at your line of work. Maybe we can make a little deal. All right. I'll take one third of the money you get from those securities and jewels. You talk too much, Murray. <laughs> Four Star Production.